What's going on everybody? So today we're doing a complete free to play light cone guide, four star and some five star here. All the light cones that you can get for free as you're playing throughout the game and some specific game modes that allow you to purchase them from their respective shops. That means Herda's shop, anything that you get from the campaign and, and basic storyline and, and world events and the light cone manifest shop uh, from the uh, forgotten hall here. So we're gonna start off with the light cone manifest. We have seven four star light cones here. Keep in mind that these are gonna be general opinions, talking about whether or not you should invest in them earlier on into the game. When we get later on in the game, there may be some more niche uses for these and they may go up or down in value depending on that. Starting off with quid pro quo though, this is gonna be an abundance type light cone. One other thing before we start going through all of them actually, the Light cones are class specific. So if you don't plan on investing into that class, or maybe you don't have a character that really suits that light cone, obviously don't go for it because you don't have anyone to use it on. Abundance though, we have, so for healers, that's gonna be Natasha, it's gonna be Beilu. Natasha's free, so you will have a character for this one. At the start of the wearer's turn, it regenerates eight energy for a randomly chosen ally whose current energy is lower than 50%, excluding the wearer. At super in position five, we have 16 energy in STEM. So this one's actually interesting and is a potential option for someone like Natasha because what this does essentially gives you more damage out of your healer slot or more utility because it's gonna be recharging the ultimates of your allies. And a lot of the times you may have some shielders like March 7th in your team comp and you may not need a ton of healing. So this is where that comes in handy because a lot of the other light cones for the four star abundance characters increase healing or increase something to do with that. I actually like this one and something that I might consider picking up and we're using on my Natasha. Next one is gonna be Fermata. This one's for the Nihility characters. So we're looking at like Sanpo, we're looking at um, Weld, we're looking at uh, Pila. Increase the break effect dealt by the wearer for 16% and increase their damage to enemies afflicted by shock or wind shear by 16%. That goes up to 32% at max level. So this one's pretty interesting because what ends up happening is essentially if someone on your team is lightning or wind type and they break a break bar, you're going to get 32% damage on them for a couple of turns uh, from this character. They're also, this character is going to do extra break bar damage. So can be potentially interesting but sampo is your free option um as far as i know so you already have a wind type character so sampo is going to be breaking he's going to get extra damage he doesn't really do a ton of damage i don't know not a, my favorite but can be okay in some scenarios we are wildfire now this one i don't necessarily like a ton we have a preservation one here extra damage uh, decreasing by eight percent at the start of battle for five turns and immediately restores hp respective difference between the character's max hp and their current hp so what this does essentially is if you're going to be chaining battles together you're going to get value out of this one 16 percent damage reduction and 50 percent hp restoration at max level for example, if you're in simulated universe and you're gonna go through and you're worried about your character slowly losing HP, you start off the battle, you get some HP restoration, um, which is a pretty solid one, and then you're gonna get some damage reduction for those first initial turns. You go to the next battle and you kind of keep your HP topped off throughout the whole thing. However, uh, I don't really see a problem with the simulated universe in that case. Um, I don't really have that issue, I guess you could say. At the same time, in open world, you don't really have this issue because you can kind of just teleport back. To me, this one is very, very specific towards the early game. And after the first five turns, remember you're not getting any value from this. So not a huge favorite, not a huge favorite. Definitely not one that I would uh, very much want to invest in. River flows in spring, the hunt light cone here. Stave off the lingering cold. After an entering battle, increases the wearer's speed by 8% and damage by 12% whenever the day the wearer takes damage, this effect will disappear. This effect will resume after the end of the wearer's next turn. So definitely a really good one. I really like this one. This can go up to 12% and 24% respectively. The key with this is you have things like the Fire Trailblazer, uh, if you have like Gepard, if you have anyone that can taunt or increase the chance like March 7th of them getting hit, then you can kind of 
scoot all the damage over to one character and they can have basically have 12 percent permanent speed and 24 percent permanent damage that's actually really big for characters like su shang characters like um you have to have a sila very very good light cone and definitely highly recommend if you happen to have some of those hunt characters paired with the fire trailblazer with which you always will have same with march 7th etc Next one is past and future. This is going to be for the harmony type character. So someone like Asta, when the wearer uses the skill, the next ally taking action deals 16% increased damage for one turn. So this one can either be really, really good or really, really mediocre because it depends on how your turn order sets up. Now, the problem with this is that eventually they start to overlap and unless you have perfectly speed tuned, which you won't, this is not going to get value every single time. For example, my team comp currently is Sila, Natasha, Gepard, uh, Fire Trailblazer. The only character I want increasing damage is Sila. All the other three aren't going to give me any value out of this one. So not a huge one, uh, a huge favorite on this one. I, I think that this one is, is a little bit too much RNG for me and uh, honestly not a, not a huge boon. Wolf walk time, destruction type one. We have increases the wearer's attack by 10%, increases their damage to enemies afflicted with burn or bleed by 16%. This can go up to 20 and 32% respectively. I like this one a lot. This one's very, very good for those destruction type characters. Keep in mind that um, you're gonna just get 20% attack and you're gonna increase their damage dealt for anyone that's gonna be burnt or bled. That is massive, guys. This is huge for any of your destruction type characters, especially if there's someone like Himiko in there who's going to be applying those burns consistently so you can get even more value out of this one. 20% attack's already good, and the extra damage is going to be quite solid as well. So very much like this one. Next one, we have the seriousness of breakfast, and this is the last one in this shop. This is going to be for the air edition type characters. So someone like Cerevall, for example, increases the wearer's damage by 24%. For every defeated enemy, the wearer's attack increases by 8%, at uh, and that's 12% and 4% at the level 1 version. This is really good as well. Um, obviously, you're going to need an erudition type character, but keep in mind that we're going to be defeating enemies quite often, um, especially when you have like a boss fight, you oftentimes have like 1 to 2 to 3 adds, so you could definitely get this attack very consistently. 16% is very, very regular, 24% is a little bit more rare, but definitely can happen. Then you're just going to get 24% increased damage. Who doesn't love 24% increased damage? This is very, very good uh, for your erudition type characters. Again, someone like Serval, someone like... Uh, well, some of your air edition characters, right? <laughs> um, that's going to be all the ones in the Light Cone Manifest shop. Let's hop over to the Herta store. So here we are at Herta's store, and we have three five-star Light Cones here. We also have this Superimposer. Now, keep in mind this Superimposer is specifically designed to work with these three Light Cones. It will not work on the other Light Cones that you may have, other five-star ones, that is. And generally speaking, if you guys want my preferred strategy here, I would go for one of these and then superimpose it to max. Reason being... These cost two, which means you can get one five-star maxed light cone in terms of superimposing versus two non-superimposed light cones. And that means that you can basically get double value on a light cone versus two solid light cones. And when you're talking about early game, you're only focusing on five, six, seven characters. Going for one max light cone is very, very effective in my opinion. But let's talk about the light cones themselves. On the fall of an Aeon, here is the first one, Destruction type. Keep in mind that when we're considering these ones, we're competing with the other light cones we're seeing in these other shops, right? Because we have to figure out which one we want to use on our Destruction type character. If you have multiple, that's when you know maybe you want to go for the second one. So when the wearer attacks, their attack is increased by 8% in the battle, up to four times. And when they inflict Weak Beast Break, they're going to increase their damage for two turns. This can go up to 16% and 24% respectively. This means 64% attack increase and potential 24% damage increase. This is big. I like this far more than the previous Destruction Light Cone, even though they're kind of similar. Um, this is just more value, in my opinion, overall, and very, very consistent, because you just have to basically attack four times, and you're going to get this value. Now, what I like about this the most is that you can guarantee get 64% attack due to the superimposing on the light cone. So very, very interesting option for your destruction type characters. Let's talk about the other ones though first, before I would say give my favorite of these three. We have cruising in the stellar sea path hunt, increases the wear crit rate by 8% and increases their crit rate 
against enemies with 50% HP or lower by an extra 8%. And when the enemy defeats an enemy or when the wearer defeats an enemy, their attack is increased by 20% for two turns. So interesting one here. The thing I think about when I see this one is, generally speaking, your damage dealers want to kind of one-shot the adds, or not, if not, maybe two-shot them naturally. So the crit rate bonus is going to be effective only against the boss. And so that means that the attack increasing doesn't really fit well with the crit rate increasing, generally speaking. At max, it is a lot of crit rate and a lot of attack. I do like this one just for the 16% increased crit rate. And of course, if you have someone like Sila, this is going to be very, very good because you can like kill someone on the side, get an extra turn, ult someone, um, and then make sure you get that, that attack bonus where you want it. Is it better than the previous light cone that we've seen? I actually think that they're very, very competable. I think that in some situations, getting that extra crit rate is going to be massive. I really like crit rate. However, um, you don't really get the second part of this value all the time. Whereas if you have the taunt set up and all that good stuff, then you will get the other light cones value. However, there's an important distinction and that is the four star light cone can get removed from the aoe attacks so maybe i'll give the edge to this five star but it is pretty solid um, in terms of the four star one if you just want to go for that for the hunt characters next up we have the texture of memories for the preservation type it's going to increase the wearer's effect resistance by eight if the wearer is attacked and has no shield they gain a shield and it can only be triggered once every three turns if the wearer has a shield when attacked the damage they received decreases by 12 percent this goes up to 60 percent effect resistance 32% max HP shield when they have no shield and 24% damage reduction when they do have a shield. This one is really, really good. The reason I like this is because if you consider someone like the Trailblazer Fire version, you're going to constantly be having shields. Not to mention if you have something like March 7th in your team comp, which is a very, very potent combo with the Fire Trailblazer, you're gonna constantly give them that shield and then boom, you're gonna get that huge value from the massive damage reduction, meaning they can basically perma taunt and not die. This one is probably my favorite of these three five-star light cones. However, if you have a really good destruction type character, then you can really get some value out of the previous one that I talked about. Overall, I would say that generally speaking, the texture of memories is gonna be great for everyone because I know you all have March 7th and Fire Trailblazer. If you have a really good destruction type character, on the fall of an Aeon can be really, really powerful to amp up your damage. As for the hunt, I'd probably just go for the previous one, which I'm forgetting the name right now, um, because it's still gonna give you a lot of value. So that pretty much wraps it up. I know I mentioned that there are a couple light cones that you can get from campaign. However, those ones are generally the same ones that you can buy from the light cone manifest. For example, here at this shop uh, in Herta Station, you can see here, um, you can actually pick up a ton of things in the shop and one of the rewards for buying stuff in the shop is going to be that wolf walk time here which is going to increase that damage for destruction characters if we go through and we just look at the map um, you can see that there's going to be another shop here on here uh Urillo 5 with where is it it's in boulder town uh you can get the Fermata, as well as We Are Wildfire. Not only that, but if you go into the Operation Briefing and you go through here, you could see, and the earlier ones, here, I'll flip myself over, you can get the River Flows in Spring, um, let me see, and the We Are Wildfire again. So, a couple of free ones as you just go through the game and, you know, get currency, finish some things, etc. But they are all of the same opinion that I had earlier, <laughs> which is that, they are either good or they are already kind of mediocre. Keep in mind though that if you already did get a couple of free ones, then getting, getting those from the Light Code Manifest shop could be a little bit more interesting due to the fact that you'll have increased rank, which gives you increased value of those Light Cones. And that could be more interesting than potentially um, the level one versions, even though I did kind of rate them based on their potential. And honestly, some of them are just not that great. So. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed. If this was helpful, be sure to sub to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one.